I just would wonder how many people even know whether the brand that we have of an agent. Like we put a commercial in there, but I feel like people sometimes don't even understand that this is this, it's like a, a successful thing that we're building and is going well. Nobody ever asks us about it. No. Ever. No. So it's like I don't know if we're hiding it or we're just really bad at marketing or else. I don't know. Yeah. I'm proud of it on the one yeah. hand because it's yeah. we've put a lot of hard yeah. work into For it sure. and we've built something unusual. Future Optimist. Welcome back to the extra special episodes, the in-between episodes where we talk about some random stuff. <laughs> no, it's not a good joke. We're going to talk about something business related today because mm-hmm. there's this thing that's always bubbling under the surface, but we never actually get to it very often because when we do the podcast, I'm interviewing other people and yeah. I'm getting their stories all the time. So let's take this time to talk about this thing bubbling under the surface, which is the building of a digital marketing agency, Mm -hmm. which is both of our our bread and butter. It's this thing that I've been building. I started doing it on my own for a few years, and we started this company in 2016. So I thought it might be interesting to talk a little bit about the journey of building an agency and what it takes to take an agency away from solopreneur and freelancer up to seven figures per year in revenue and beyond. Yeah, I actually like this topic. So where should we jump in? (laughs) Like, how did you come up with the idea? Sure. Well, a lot of things come from evolution of ideas. And in fact, if I were smarter, my life would have taken a very different trajectory from the time I was 10 or 12 or 13. Like My life and Bill Gates' life and Elon Musk's life (laughs) had a lot of similarities up until the time I was 13. Because when I was 13, I was programming my calculator in assembly language, so not in basic for the nerds out there, but actual assembly language. I was programming games and they still exist online. You can see this game. So I was coding for real and also learning HTML and PHP at the age of 13 and building websites. But of course, like an idiot, I had no concept of commercialization of that as a skill. I knew that I was interested in the future. I knew that I was interested in online communities. And, you know, I was chatting with people from around the world. I was in coding clubs, digital ICQ channels and IRC channels, chatting with people about coding and learning. So I was doing all of the right things. But what I didn't know is I didn't even conceptualize the idea that you could make money from this. And when I made games, I made them for free on a platform that you release them for free because that's just what the culture was Mm -hmm. at the time. I had some dim understanding that might be valuable. Neither of my parents are entrepreneurs. I was not raised with entrepreneurship as a skill set, Mm -hmm. which is something that I want to change with our kids. So I just didn't have the sense of you could actually make big money if you could just flip that skill slightly over there. I just did it for the fun of it. Yeah. So I was always good at technology, but then I took a huge detour when that technology came into making music and digital music. And then my knowledge shifted into learning logic and Ableton and synthesizers and all of that stuff. And then I wanted to be a DJ for basically 10, 15 years. Yeah, right? And you and, were. So, and I was, yeah. And I worked at a record and did all those things and toured and stuff. But I basically left that behind, but it was always a skill that I had. Mm -hmm. And later on, I've just, it's like you meet your destiny on the path you take to avoid it. I was working at a record label, but it became very apparent that I had skills on the website. So very quickly, I was taking over the running of the three major websites for a major record label Mm -hmm. and and applying my skills because I had those skills. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, I was running, (laughs) yes. I'm learning something uh, yeah. new. And, and I was also doing a startup Yeah. when I graduated yeah. with um, mm-hmm. a handful of the most unethical people I've ever had the <laughs> uh, um, displeasure of, of meeting in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was doing a startup, but that was also digital and remote and using a lot of these tools. So I've always been kind of ahead of the curve and embracing technology and using digital tools like SoundCloud, Slack, Skype, just being one step ahead in these things than, than most people, but mm-hmm. not obviously not the the top. So that was percolating. And then you begin a logical progression when you're trying to make a bunch of money, you think, okay, what can I do? And I had to start from scratch because I was reading all these, I started business books in what, 2015, I read my first ever business book. Mm -hmm. And that began that entrepreneurial journey of me learning from the basics of how to build a business. What is a business? Why do you build a business? What's the attitude, right? And quickly, it became apparent that some people would ask me, do you build websites? Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and I built some websites for people for a fixed amount of money, a very small amount of money. I did it all myself and I improved and used my skills to do that. But what you kind of learn as you do stuff like this is that people will ask follow-up questions all the time. And those questions are, cool, I have a website. Now what? Mm -hmm. Because a website doesn't mean anything to anybody if nobody visits it. So then I would say at that time, I don't know now what. Yeah. <laughs> like that's not my responsibility. Right. I, I just built your website. But then you start thinking, what if I knew the answer to that question? Yeah. What is now what? Yeah. And then you learn stuff about what is SEO or search engine optimization? What is content marketing? What is blogging? And then I started learning what is digital marketing in general? What is social media marketing? And you become aware that all of these companies and organizations have the same fundamental questions and they're very predictable and they're very sequential often. It's like, we got to start here, then the next question is this, and how do we turn that into money? Mm -hmm. So each one of those questions that they're inevitably going to ask is a potential for learning something new and offering yeah. a new service that can be money. And so it's this, it's the combination of all of those things stacked on top of each other, the answers to the question that everybody has that leads to much higher paying, much more valuable mm -hmm. work. Yeah. So it was just me figuring that out literally step by step over the course of many years. I love that answer. <laughs> so good. Yeah, never thought of it that way. But yeah, that's true. You just basically solve a whole bunch of problems <laughs> for... Yes. And that is what we do. We mm -hmm. solve a whole bunch yeah. of problems yeah. Yeah. for people. Yeah. And we have experience doing that. And of course, the full circle moment is I got very good at audio, making dance music tracks and mastering and mm -hmm. all of this stuff matters. This is yeah. audio. This is video. Mm -hmm. And video, audio, that's what content is and copywriting and all of these things that I have done that we have done separately in mm -hmm. our own lives. That's the kind of stuff that comes together yeah. in this thing called marketing exactly. or digital marketing or digital agency. Yeah. So it is in some way related, but we took a very long road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to, yeah. I think that's how... Uh, to to that's, understand that. Yeah. But I think that's how it always goes, you know, with businesses. Not for Bill Gates. Okay. <laughs> Maybe not for everybody. Bill Gates went to the, he <laughs> started where I was at 13 and then <laughs> he's a millionaire by 19. <laughs> okay, we did everything wrong. Yeah, that's that's clear. Anybody listening to the show will know that we did, that I did everything wrong. That's obvious. Yes. Each piece of content we put out is just further <laughs> proof of that in case anybody had any doubts. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. No, exactly. Okay, so let's talk about, I'll ask the question that comes next, right? Mm -hmm. So again, it's all about the logical, the logically following question. Yeah. So you're answering questions for clients mm -hmm. in terms of what comes next for their business. It's like, mm -hmm. how do I get people to my website? How do I convert those people? What yeah. are the language that people are using, right? So when you, and this comes back to ego mm -hmm. and solopreneur versus entrepreneur or solopreneur freelancer versus business builder, mm -hmm especially when you consider that you have multiple talents mm -hmm. and when you consider that you're capable of learning anything, which not everybody has, but some people have mm -hmm. many different talents and skills. Mm -hmm. There's this belief that I need to be the best graphic designer. Right. I need to be the best copywriter. I need to be the best of all of these things. Yeah. And you can hold on to that illusion for a little while, but pretty quickly, if you try to build your business, then you realize that's no longer possible. Even yeah. if you could theoretically do it, you can't practically do it. Mm -hmm. So then you have to confront the question of how do I build a team? Yeah. How do I get other people to help me do more than I can do myself? Even if it's offloading some tasks, and that's a part of it, I think, is just offloading stuff that I could do, but I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. Even like house cleaning, you could do yeah. it, but you don't want to do it. And maybe you can pay money and somebody else can do that. So you can do something else. This is all from the basic business books, obviously. But something that really struck me was from Henry Ford's biography. He said that his success was built on surrounding himself with people who are smarter than he was and hiring people who are smarter than he was. That seems real simple, but 
when you're first starting to build a business, it almost feels impossible to consider doing that. For sure. Because you think, how would I hire somebody mm -hmm. who is smarter than me? How would I manage that? Yeah. And I really didn't know how to do that mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. So what changed? What changed is gradually you take steps towards building a team. Gradually you expand. And of course, as you know, with one mm -hmm employee one person on the team yeah. and then now She's we're up, awesome. yes we're up to like <laughs> you know 14 people on the yeah. team and it's growing and yeah so from your experiences with that you get some positive encouragement but also you get some negative things you get mm -hmm. some complexity dealing with other people's lives yeah is is difficult yeah. Also because people are not machines, people mm -hmm. are not robots. Each person has their own set of challenges and baggage or needs. Or mm -hmm. You can't say with absolute certainty that anybody's going to be somewhere or do something. What if they get sick? What mm -hmm. if something happens? What if their hard drive crashes? Yeah. Anytime you bring another person into something, the complexity and potential difficulties goes up. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. But what also happens is the capacity goes up. Yeah. And that starts to unlock something, which is a really powerful feeling of when you feel that your team's efforts are multiplying something, that was the first time that something really changed in mm -hmm. my brain. It's when you see how all of these talented people add up to something that's more than each of them individually. Yeah. And that was also something from the Steve Jobs story in the Steve Jobs biography is that, you know, he considered himself the conductor of the orchestra <laughs> and other people thought that was not valuable because Steve Wozniak was the guy building the chips. And I can mm -hmm. see both of those things as I think they're both true. Yeah. Wozniak was the genius behind Apple, but would it have become Apple without Steve Jobs? No. And it's and w when people who have never built a business see that story, yeah. they don't understand the value that a Steve Jobs yeah. can have being the conductor right. and not the player of the instrument. It's so funny because people also say, what does a DJ do? And it's similar. <laughs> and it's similar where yes. you create an experience. It's mm -hmm. not just a bunch of songs that you throw together. Mm -hmm. Same here. It's not just a bunch of people you throw together. It, it, right. it's, there's a strategy behind it. There's a. I, I think you're a really natural manager. You're really good with people. You're really compassionate, but also no nonsense. And I'm really proud of you. Oh, I think you're doing really great. <laughs> well, we're, doing it, we're doing it together, yeah. Yeah, um, I think I, I like that I started a little bit later than you. You started by yourself and then I came on board. And I like the yin and yang energy we mm. have. I think you're really good with your team. I think you're really good with sales. I think you're great with just getting shit done. I'm very much focused on like client experience i think my mission in life is to help people and brands connect with what is my inner voice whatever that means you mm. know and how do i bring it out in the best way mm. and yeah i really like applying that mission and that skill onto our agency i think and that's, you're good at the intangible stuff yeah the intangible you're, stuff you're good at the the human relations yeah. part of this and yeah. and also the expectations part expectation management yeah um client services i guess you could say just yeah. sort of what is the human yeah. part of and what's the why happy. of yeah. the things you want to get done and like that's valuable a how are you if you want to get from a to b what does that mean and why right. do you want to do that and when i'm focused on the let's go get it all done mm -hmm. oftentimes that kind of stuff goes by the wayside right. and not yeah. just for us but for every everybody company, yeah. right yeah. and that's why they need yeah. some help yeah. oftentimes exactly. is because yeah. everybody is just frantically trying mm -hmm. to make as much money as they can as fast as they can yeah and very few people have the time to sit back and you know really engage with some of those other questions yeah. and, and we can do that mm -hmm. for them exactly which is appreciated yeah. via yeah know, you so yeah yeah it's the systems that i think that we're working on now mm -hmm. to, to think of like okay how yeah. can we go from a million in revenue to 10 million in revenue in a year right and you know do we want to do that or, like are we comfortable just keeping things where we are do we want to grow and i think we, we do want to grow but i think we're, we're both a little bit scared of what that, what that would that mean, mean? <laughs> right yeah. if we have a 10 million dollar company does that mean yeah. our life is completely owned and we can't be there for our kids i think there's this excitement about mm -hmm. that but also fear about that mm -hmm. um, and, and wondering what exactly our temperature is but yeah but it is clear as you get beyond 10 staff mm -hmm. as you get 
more clients and more projects, organization, system, profitability, all of these things become much, much bigger concerns. And that is the part of the journey that we're on. It's like, okay, how do we systematize this? How do we replicate some of our process? Because we have such amazing people, but how do you duplicate an amazing person? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, okay, we know Michael Jordan can play (laughs) basketball. Great. Now I need five of them. There's only one, right? So it's like, how do you, how do we put the stuff in place that allows us to serve 5, 10, 15, 20 clients equally at that high level of standard that is still a premium product right? without sacrificing across the board. And Mm -hmm. that seems to come down to systems and organization and stuff like that. Yeah, I think so. Our next piece. I think there is a sweet spot that maybe constantly changes too. I'm Mm. not sure. I'm not sure yet what our sweet spot is, but... um, Don't think we've hit it yet. (laughs) No, not yet, but I think we're close. And also... It's really easy to only think of growth because you want to, yeah, I think we're kind of stagnation is death kind of people, but we love growth. But then sometimes more is not always better. So I'm not sure yet what our sweet spot is. I can uh, think of a couple of versions of that. And I I think that's why it's important. Again, going back to the why do you do what you do and what is important for a great life experience? What do we really want from life? And it's one of our friends said that success is like a snake eating its own tail. And that, and I, I've experienced, we've experienced that for the first time where it's as you get more uh, successful, as more money comes in, then you do have more of a new type of problem that comes up. Jay Z said, more money, more problem. There is, <laughs> that is an element of truth to that. Yeah, and it's yeah. almost like the further you go, the, the harder it is. Yeah. Because in the beginning, when you're first starting out, you have less money coming in, but there's also no risk. Mm-hmm. Because if something goes away, it's True. like I'm already broke. So what? Yeah. <laughs> you can't really get much worse than that. But mm-hmm. then as the amount of people that you're responsible for, the amount that you're on the hook for goes up every month. Yeah. The complexity of dealing with that goes up. And so it's almost like then you feel I need to be, make even more money to deal with all of that. And then you need more people to do that. And then you mm-hmm. need more money. So it's just almost like this never ending game. Yeah, it is. That, that I think, and that's how people fall into that trap yeah. where it is never enough. Right. And I think it is a real art form to be able to say like, okay, this is yeah. enough. And this is where we want to be mm-hmm. before you become a victim of your own yeah. success. And then exactly. be- before it becomes success for success's sake. And mm-hmm. I think we're both really aware of people who have everything, but they have no family. Their yes. kids hate them. Their yeah. their wife hates them. They're divorced. And it's like, that's not success. No, That no. is failure. Mm-hmm. If I had a hundred billion dollars in the bank, but I don't have a family and yeah. I, my kids hate me. Yeah. That is failure, Mm -hmm. just full stop. That is not success. And and, and we knew that in the music world with Mm -hmm. successful DJ, they're touring like 280 days of the year. And it's like, why? You have hundreds of millions of dollars. Why are you still touring every single (laughs) day? But they can't, they can't, because that would, the idea of stopping that train is so terrifying Mm -hmm. to them that they can't face the stillness that would be waiting for them. And that's the kind of thing that I know we're both really sensitive to and really scared of. Yeah. And have a lot of conversations about, and I'm not worried. No, I'm not worried either. (laughs) But, but, but because we constantly ask that question and because Mm -hmm. we constantly know what is most important, Mm -hmm. family is most important. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it for that reason is most important. Exactly. Um, But yeah. You know, flying on private jets all the time, that's not the, <laughs> the only <laughs> goal mm-hmm. to be gained from life. Um, yeah. but- no, but it's it's like, you know, before this life, we lived the artist's life, the musician's yeah. life. And that has something sexy and glamorous. Yeah. And it's easier to talk about it and be like, yeah, this I did this cool thing. And, and it speaks to people and, and it, it makes people go, whoa, that's amazing. <laughs> but now our wins are very different (laughs) and they're not easily communicable on instagram exactly and and i i can feel so happy about this one thing that feels really oh we figured out yeah i figured out notion we linked to notion database (laughs) yeah i'm so proud of like like, the client portal i built and i love it (laughs) yeah right (laughs) but it's not as cool as making a music video or (laughs) or something even though yeah it's like people who make you make way less money doing something but you're in yes a beautiful place exactly and yeah so that's but that's social media in a nutshell that, that's that's it yeah. yeah i rarely talk about what we do it's yeah, much more private don't. but yeah 
yeah, it's I'm happy with this life now. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it's less glamorous. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And maybe now one person will ask us sometime. <laughs> How did you do it? <laughs> oh, I mean, um. let me tell you. Oh, <laughs> I see there's this thing called the internet. 